Because you're relaxed and sleeping. No. Mm-hmm. There you go. Greetings. Happy Wednesday. Hola. This is Evolver Indianapolis, along with Philosophical uh, from Peaceburg. And uh, we're just having a nice conversation, triangular conversation, I think. Yes, perhaps a quintangular conversation, <laughs> since we have you here through the World Wide Web, and then the four of us, well, actually six, because we've got a little guy here who's just, as Eckhart Tolle says, he's the guardian of being. So, <laughs> but yes, I am very happy to be here in Indy, visiting from Pennsylvania slash Bloomington. Um, the theme that we're possibly going to discuss here is connecting dots, making constellations. What was the word you used? Syner- Syzygy. Uh, Syzygy. <laughs> and that's the <clears throat> alignment of celestial bodies. Specifically, three or more. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So what's been happening here in Evo- with Evolver Indy? I'm curious. Well, Evolver Indianapolis just recently started. We've had one meeting so far, um, and that was for um, a theme. What was it? That was Occupy the Future. Occupy the Future. Yeah. And it was interesting because we had everybody kind of introduce themselves and say what their talents were and what they wanted to give back to the community. And some people really knew what they wanted to do and could say, oh, I could do a lecture on this. And then there are a lot of people who, when we'd get to them, they'd say, well, I don't have a talent or I don't, I don't really know what I'm good at. So what I'm hoping for Evolver is that the people who did say that will kind of just discover the creativity inside them and one day be able to say, well, this is what I can do and, and I can teach you this as well. So mm-hmm. Another theme that came up seemed to be uh, everyone was saying how lucky or how grateful they were that there was something like this that was out there. Um, just they were waiting and uh, this was the first time that they had seen something that's really connecting people in this sort of intimate way. And so I think that this Evolver Indianapolis is providing um, a certain group or way of connecting with other people that, that everyone has been waiting for. Because mm-hmm. so. mm-hmm. Indianapolis is a little bit more conservative than other cities, so I think we've all been waiting for something like this, and it's good to have you guys form it. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like what I found in, in Peaceburg and a lot of other places was that through the internet, Evolver kind of had this platform for connecting people through screen, but also in real life gatherings. And real life gatherings was where a lot of the magic happened. So perhaps if you're watching this and you're interested, you can connect with people in Indy or in Peaceburg or in your own area and just even getting together and having a conversation. Like this has been really nice for me to come here because I've been hanging with my boring family, just kidding, um, for, the last, <laughs> for the last week or so, it feels really good to talk about Evolver and not talk about Red Lobster and <laughs> what appetizer we're going to get, which is all we do is just eat and sleep at my grandparents' house, which is great, but it's <laughs> nice to talk about the 10th dimension and uh, the guardians of being and drink some kombucha. Made my Oh, yes. Maria, <laughs> edit that. <laughs> Perhaps she was occupying the future by then brewing kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby-Doo. <laughs> so connecting dots. How are we going to connect more dots in the Evolver network? Well, hopefully with uh, this YouTube channel, um, we can encourage other people to become active on the internet and and start up conversation through the screen. (laughs) And um, maybe we can begin to ask other spores or other, anyone out there, questions that'll start a discussion and who knows what it'll blossom into. I think also just acting as kind of ambassadors for Evolver and for what we're trying to promote and the mission of just connecting people and 
and skill sharing and the more people that we talk to about it, our neighbors, people we meet at the grocery store or coworkers or whatever, it's kind of spreading the ideas and the mission and I think that does have a, a big impact as well. So maybe thinking about, about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the three of us and hopefully next year well, maybe even the five of us um, <laughs> will all be at Burning Man 2012, where there was a great Evolver coalescence. We could post a link. I actually videotaped the coalescence at Burning Man, where sporganizers from all over the world were all there in the same place. And that was really inspiring for me to see, um, because we literally are creating this whole web that stretches over the whole planet and it's like these these um i guess nodes of a, of a mycelial network and we're just constantly more connections are happening through the internet and through through regular life something i'm interested in talking about um is that some people have been turned off i feel like by um evolver or reality sandwich because they think it's too much focus on drug culture Mm -hmm. And I just think that um, that's a little bit sad for me to hear, um, just because if people want to get it behind a mission, there's always going to be something that they don't really um, feel connected to or they don't agree with. But I think like looking deeper into what is the core of what we're trying to um, build or what, you know, like what are we really trying to accomplish here? And that's just connecting people and um, just discussing like these topics that are kind of like alternative to mainstream like mm -hmm. society. and. Um, so, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that. Well, um, I mean, I think it's, it's, um, it's, I think that a lot of people's uh, spiritual path has been influenced in some way by entheogens, as I like to call them, because I think a lot of these plant medicines are very sacred, and if you respect them and treat them in a in a, the right way, then they can be very powerful and just transformational. But um, I think that is just one tiny piece to the puzzle, and people sometimes find the one piece they don't like and focus on that when there's tons of other things to focus on. Um, I mean, the spore, the topics of the spores have covered a wide range of issues. There's maybe a few like shamanism which kind of focuses on plant medicines but I think Evolver really does offer like a smorgasbord of a smorgasbord smorgasbord there's a smorgasbord of, of possibilities um, something that we have talked about um, is raw food and I think you know aside from psychedelics, maybe more a plant-based diet with raw foods can actually get you in touch with your spirituality. Um, with juice fasting, raw food, well raw foods is essentially just eating fruits, nuts, vegetables, and seeds, not heated past 110 degrees. And the food is really nourishing to the body and it's straight from the earth. So when you're eating it, you kind of get a connection with the earth and you start to look at the little things in life and just appreciate, you know, the energies of the world. Um, so, like, I'm going to host an event on making raw foods to teach the community since we haven't heard a lot of a lot about that here in Indianapolis since we are a more conservative city. But, um, but yeah, so I think that's one way about going to get in touch with your spirituality is maybe more of a plant-based raw diet. So. Mm. <laughs> Something else that we had talked about um, is that these entheogens do have this amazing ability to open our minds and to progress like our spiritual development. But what um, what happens after that? What happens after this these amazing mystical experiences? Does the experience become the main point of focus that you want to keep going back to, or can you move on and and think about how it can be integrated into your life so we can be better people? So that's what I feel like we're we're thinking about and we're trying to have an intention to to create and build is um you know how can we integrate um, what we've learned through our lives not maybe just with entheogens but our life experiences and use that to to 
propel into a, a better future, to being better human beings and build a better community. Mm-hmm. Well said. Yeah, I think that um, you could see life as a continuum, and some people call it a trip. So it's like, oh, that was when I was way out there in that state of consciousness. But I think that all these all these different experiences all just fit into a continuum of life and the key is to to try and bring those peak experiences back, bring lessons back and live them every day. Um, and I like to call them no socks, which stands for non-ordinary state of consciousness. And if you're barefoot, then it's a double no sock. Um, but you can have, I've had numerous very powerful no socks without ingesting any sort of plant medicine. It's, you can reach the same place through meditation, yoga, fasting, raw food, staying awake for a long time. You can have them spontaneously. There's, there's a million ways to explore consciousness and I think it's, um, it's important to recognize that you don't even have to take any sort of chemical or anything like that to achieve that. This kind of um, brings up Bruce Lipton and the biology of belief. Um, I'm not exactly familiar with it, but maybe the idea that intention alone can alter your state of consciousness. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I've, I've read a fair amount of Bruce Lipton stuff. I highly recommend especially spontaneous evolution that's the one i've um checked out we could post a link to one of his videos um but that book he just presents all this evidence he's he has a phd and he just um proposes all this biological evidence to show that our our beliefs that we hold about the world have such an impact on our body's health and he shows how cancer patients, if they change their beliefs, then they can heal themselves. And he applies that in spontaneous evolution to a cultural level. It's like culturally we seem to have kind of a cancer state. We're pretty dysfunctional as a society. But if we change our cultural beliefs, um, and the beliefs that we change them to are the ones that are actually the truth. Because currently we have dysfunctional beliefs that um, see the world as perhaps mechanistic and reductionistic um, but if we change our beliefs then we can heal the whole planet and that's what's happening through things like Evolver <laughs> so scoobily do any uh, final ex exclamatory gestures here <laughs> Two main things I've been thinking about. Mm -hmm. Raw foods. <laughs> and the whole time, the little fella here has been guarded, guarding the realm of being because the realm of being is primary to doing, in my opinion at least, in my right. belief system. Human beings. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you for being with us here in this cyberspace happy wednesday <laughs> ciao